A warm welcome to Northampton Methodist Church Worship at Home for the 5th of February. Isaiah prophesied that the people who walked in darkness would see a great light. When Jesus came, he said, I am the light of the world. When he was with his disciples, he said, You are the light of the world. And in today's Gospel reading, he tells people that we are the light and salt of the world. That's all of us, all of Jesus' disciples, from back then all the way to you and me now. Salt and light are both things that make a difference, a difference to our surroundings, to our world. That's the thing about Christians. We should be making a difference in our world. Do we think that we're really making a difference? Are we really making our world a better place? The reading from Isaiah today tells us that making a show of our discipleship, saying that we're disciples, isn't enough. We don't fool God by what we say. And Isaiah was telling people that what they had to do was walk the walk, as well as talk the talk. Isaiah told people that their acts of fasting, their wearing sackcloth and ashes to show their humility was quite useless because God could see inside them. God knew what they were doing. He knew what was in their hearts, even if they were fooling the people around them. He could tell that they were saying that they were sorry and still carrying on behaving just as badly as before. Repentance is about being sorry, but it's more about changing, of being better from the future. Not about saying sorry and then just carrying on as you were before. True fasting is when we love others by doing good to help them. And when we do that, we're doing it because we believe it from the inside. We want to show goodness to others and that's true worship. And that is when we are truly honouring God's will with our whole being. When we do that, it's what God wants to see in us. It's how he wants to see us behaving. We have to shine always from the inside. We have to shine and show that what we believe inside is what we're showing outside. And we're not just doing things on the outside that we don't believe on the inside. Our light has to start inside and shine out. If you tell someone that they're the salt of the earth, you actually are paying them a compliment. You're telling them that in some way they're special. In the ancient world, salt was very highly valued. It was pure and it had many uses. It was produced by the sea and by the sun drying all the salt out. It was highly valued and it was used for many things, including their cooking. We still use some salt to add flavour to our food. If you put just the right amount in, it enhances the flavour. If you put too much in, it can spoil it. If you don't put it in at all and you sprinkle it on afterwards, it's not quite the same. The salt has to be in right at the beginning, working its magic all the way through the cooking time. Those of us that have had to go on a salt-free diet will realise just what a difference that little bit of salt in our food can make. I didn't enjoy it at all when I couldn't have my salt in my cooking. It was also used to preserve things. It was a good preservative in the days before freezers. I can remember my family salting runner beans to keep them through the winter. And I know many countries salt fish. It's a way of preserving. It's a way of keeping things without having ice. Christians should be to life what salt is to food. We should be working away with everything around us, enhancing life for others and preserving the things that are good preventing the bad things from taking over. We should be making a stand, even when it's hard. 
having God in our lives should make us stand out, to sparkle. Sadly, many think that following Jesus means that you have to give up all the fun things, that you lose your sparkle, but that's not true. It just means we have to choose the things that are good and the things that don't cause harm to other people. When the sun shines on salt, picks out all the little crystals and it sparkles. And if we do as we should and look to Jesus, our light, he shines on us and he will make us sparkle. He will lead us to do the right things and help us to enhance the lives and to reflect his love to others. That's the great thing as Christians, we're not left on our own ever. Jesus is always there with us. He'll always help us if we want him to. We just have to ask and then we have to listen while he tells us what to do. And the light that he gives to us, the light that we reflect from him, is not just for any reason. It has a purpose. It's there to lead others safely and to lighten the dark places around us where people are struggling. You know, there's an awful lot of people now that are struggling. A lot who have very little hope, a lot needing help. And they need that light, that light of kindness that shines onto them. And our light can't stop at our own front door. It can't stop at the door of our church. It's not just for us. The light that we've got, that feeling of having God within us, is intended for the whole world. For all the places that we live in for all of our workplaces, for our homes, it's intended for everybody. And each of us has the opportunity to make life better for others. In small ways we can all do something to let God's love work through us to help those in need. So let's make sure that all our thoughts and our words and our actions show that we are salt and light to the world. And remember that if you have a light and you cover it over with something, it's useless. And if you just leave salt on the side for long enough, it loses its saltiness. It loses its use. In order for our light and our salt to be effective, we have to use them all the time. We have to work with them the whole time and let God use us to make a difference just where we are. And as the old song says, let's shine from the inside out so the whole world can see God lives in me. If he's living in us, it should make a difference. So let's enjoy being salt and light to the world. Amen. <laughs>